In this tutorial, we will learn to model signal to noise ratio properly using bandwidth, the sensitivity threshold, and the noise floor. These three values are interlinked and are critical in accurately modeling SNR. We have a template set up here already. It's an L-band radio with two watts of power and a color schema we prepared where green is good at 30 decibels and our threshold is five, which is red. So if we go ahead and click at the end of this runway here, this is a one mile runway. Uh, we can use this to measure the distance and we can see we're touching just the end of the runway here at one mile. And that's our starting point for coverage. We've input um, the minimum bandwidth and a noise floor value here. But this radio, like many modern radios, has different modes. It can operate in different waveforms with different bandwidth values. So let's start increasing this bandwidth value and see what happens. So first of all, we'll just go up to two megahertz. First thing that happens is a prompt appears and it says the noise floor has been set to minus 111. Now this value is dynamic. It changes depending on where you are. It changes depending on the season, on the time of the day. In this case, we don't know what the noise floor is over here in Portsmouth, but we're modeling this using a formula called Johnson Nyquist. And the Johnson Nyquist formula allows us to identify a noise floor for a given bandwidth. But the way to accurately get the noise floor is actually to go there with a spectrum analyzer and update that value. And so if we went here and we took a measured value and it was minus 109, we could enter that value. And now we get a slightly different output, a bit more conservative now by two decibels because we have used a calibrated measured value instead, which is always preferable. But you don't always have a value to hand, so you may just have to guess it using Johnson Nyquist. So here, let's double the bandwidth again. Let's see what happens. So four megahertz. So noise floor is higher because four megahertz is wider. So it has more channel noise and coverage is now about halfway. Let's keep going. Eight megahertz. It's noisier. Coverage is smaller. 16 megahertz. And now we're pretty small. We're a couple of hundred meters only. So that's how you might use bandwidth in order to do accurate modeling for a given bandwidth. But what about the sensitivity? This is probably one of the most important values that you can use when you're radio planning, and it's very easy to make a mistake here. A radio has a threshold at which it can detect a received signal. And with digital signals, those thresholds are linked closely to the waveform that you are using. So different modulation schemas have different thresholds. Like QPSK can operate when it's very noisy, whereas a large QAM signal with lots of symbols may need a higher, cleaner signal. So if we had a different waveform which needed 15 dB SNR, so a large video waveform, we can see that not only have we reduced the coverage, but we've also lost all the red, the red being the weaker signal. And this continues. So if we said we need 20 dB because this is a really high capacity link, well, you can have that link, but it's not going to be very far. It's just to here, a couple of hundred meters. And conversely, if you had a waveform uh, which was designed to be resilient in a noisy environment, then you could go very far. So uh, three decibels here, you could cover that airfield nicely. So the noise floor needs to be accurate, but you can use Johnson Nyquist if you don't know. The noise will increase as the bandwidth increases. And the sensitivity threshold is key. It has to be set correctly. If you're not sure, then use a safe value. So let's say your waveform uh, can work at three decibels, add on a margin and use a five decibel threshold uh, for something that is uh, safer for planning.